Hi guys, I'm Sal Avalo. In my journey to every country in the world, I've seen just how much waste we produce as humans, and it's made me reflect on how much waste I produce in my personal life. Today, I'm here with my friend Mariska, who is a zero waste activist and artist. We first met a couple years ago when she was doing her Waste Me Not Challenge, which she's gonna tell you a little bit about now. So I walked around carrying my own trash for 30 days just to kind of represent how much waste the average global citizen generates. In the end, it was about 65 kilos. Today, Marisk and I are going to talk about waste. We're first going to look at my house and see the different ways that I am wasteful and uh, ways I might not even know that I'm wasteful. And I'm also going to be sharing some travel tips, how you can be less wasteful when you actually travel as well. Some tips and advice for you for the next journey. And so let's get started. I'm very nervous because I think I'm pretty wasteful. <laughs> We've been in the bathroom for like five seconds and Mariska has found a lot of, like you don't even think about it but literally every single thing is plastic yeah and did you actually know that every single plastic toothbrush that you've ever used still exists <laughs> I use a lot <laughs> I don't know why, but I use it only for like a book. Well, now you've got it. Now you've got a bamboo one, which can be. I've just been given a bamboo toothbrush, which show now, but true. Okay, let's begin. Mariska, this is my my bathroom. How are you feeling about it? Anxious, <laughs> but um, but yeah, there's 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 lots of stuff for deodorant. Obviously, you know this is all plastic, and because it's so many different types, it can't really be recycled if you just pop it in face cream so face creams as well you can get in glass containers that's reusable and some of the places will even sell refillable toothpaste holders these cannot be recycled because if you actually cut it open you'll see it's got like some silver foil thing in the um, inside and then obviously the plastic on the outside so glass is good right yeah, it's not all this one, it's does, not all do you bad. refill this one or you buy this like every time and then throw it away? I've had it for like... <laughs> <laughs> so it is a glass, so obviously, um, I mean, you can use this and preferably if it can be refilled, you can always, you know, refill it. Hair gel. You can actually make your own hair gel. <laughs> how how <laughs> do you have time to do all this? <laughs> So I kind of pick my battles and whatever it is that I know I'm going to be using for a long time, I would kind of make those items. It's not like, you know, I spend two weeks out of the month making the stuff I need. So that's becoming very difficult. I feel like I have to spend my entire life making. <laughs> no, you don't have to. Pick one thing and kind of do that for a month and then decide to do another thing. And then it's easy, yeah. and it's a journey. Like next month you can maybe look at, or not next month, when your shampoo is finished, okay? So don't don't go out and buy shampoo bars now if and throw your shampoo that's still fine away, unless you feel it's poisonous and it's ruining your hair. You know, keep using it until it's finished and when you wanna buy a new one, like opt for a shampoo bar. So there's no packaging. So, Love it. Yeah. It's a journey. One step at a time. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about my pretty candle? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's not plastic, right? It's like fake gold. Yeah, it is. And you probably reuse this again and again. Are candles okay? I actually don't know. I know like soy candles and stuff like more natural stuff is okay. But it depends on what is inside, like, you know, the perfumes and the fragrances and things. That's normally what, what is causing the issue. But so you just said a good phrase, which I like, which is pick your battles. Yeah. So you've basically shown that every single thing that I have. Except this one. Except for the argon oil is wasteful. What, let's say I pick two battles, which 
what should I do? Okay, so definitely the toothbrush is... Okay, bamboo, um, but you've already yeah. done that for me, so you've got so, bamboo one. step one, and then the toothpaste, um, you know, you can get like a tooth powder as well. Alum aluminium, aluminium, aluminium. <laughs> um, um, don't just think of this is gonna wash, you know, brush my teeth and it's gonna clean my mouth, but also think of what is gonna happen with this after you've done what you thought it's gonna you ruin know. the world. Yeah. So, you know, try, try and get something that either can be recycled or refilled. This is my new uh, bamboo toothbrush that Mariska has gifted me. I'm now slightly more sustainable, but I'm not gonna start using it until I throw out the other toothbrush because no need to, uh, you know, do uh, waste too soon either. I think what I've always loved about the way that you are a zero waste activist is that you're not militant or even when you are aggressive, it's still nice. You could look around the house and be mean about it, but you've always like slowly pushed me in the right direction and not yelled at me for not already being far. So I think that's like, that's the way to kind of like help us on our journey. Thank you. Yeah, I think there's no point in being so like, it has to be like this. And I was a little bit like that in the beginning because you know, I just found out like, you know, plastic is destroying the world and it was hard and I had to deal with it and I couldn't understand why everyone else wasn't feeling the same way but then I kind of you know thought about it and I decided well it's better to try and change someone by doing one thing and rather change it by let them see you as an example and let them learn from that instead of you know making it like a school exercise every right. time you <laughs> You know judge them so i think it's better just to um, take it one step at a time and don't judge people you know it's it's their journey they're on their own journey and they might be at the beginning where you know you've been doing like i've been doing this now for a few years so you know we need to meet each other somewhere are you ready to dig in your cupboards and drawers i'm a little bit nervous so let's look there's a <laughs> a few of these. So I usually have most of my food at home. Um, I rarely get delivery, maybe like twice a month. Oh, four uh, times. And I five. usually, I, no, I, and I try to ask for no cutlery, but sometimes I give it to you anyway. Typically, I will rate my bags before I get it or the delivery, because um, sometimes you would get this with pizza even, which is yeah. unbelievable. Um, so I typically would give it back to them right then and there when I get it right. And at least try not to throw it away. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, you can still use this. This is perfectly fine to use, even though you shouldn't use single-use plastic. But if it's here, you know, rather make a use of this than what it ends up in a bin and it's just going to end up like this in a landfill. So these is like proper plastic little sponges. It's made of plastic? So it is plastic. It's wow. So these have to go to landfill. There's nothing that can't be recycled. It's really just terrible. And you're going to use it for a few weeks and then throw it out. So, so what do you use? So I use a loofah. And I mean, you can even grow them on your balcony. It's fantastic. What? Yeah, you can grow loofahs. <laughs> so it's an awesome plant. And all of the receipts. So in some countries they can recycle this and others not because it's got like a small thin plastic layer type yeah. of thing so it you shouldn't really recycle this even with normal paper check always with your recycling facility do they accept receipts yes no these are like reusable and these are fine right so these ones are reusable um, the issue that I have with this, and I mean, this is so much better than using the single-use plastic ones. Right. But I would still rather have a filter on my tap. Okay. So <laughs> just literally a plastic bag. <laughs> so, well, this is like, I don't know if it's like a... Trash bag? No. Put it on, like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to wearing my own trash, I think you can tell. These are reusable tea containers. Yes. Uh, that's the thing I do a lot is drink tea. So this is an entire cabinet of tea. I try and get some organic South African, like you. You're an organic South African. Yes, I'm not sure about the brand, but if you were to open this, it's going to have like a foil in the inside. So yeah. this typically can't be recycled. 
and then um, the tea bags itself sometimes contain plastic. Right. And so I was quite shocked to find out about the plastic in the tea bags. Yeah, because I, I probably will have 10 cups a day of tea, and wow. so I, uh, I try always to stick with, with loose leaf as yeah. much as I can. I'm the kind of person where I will always select the option to be more sustainable if it's easy for me. Mm. If I'm at the store and there's the option, if I'm ordering from the online and there's the, the option. I think about what are those options and I mean like with me and with my community every time like someone wants to ask a question just ask that you know like where can I get a shampoo or where can I get that and we'll try and, and get you on the right path. Mariska's um, about to, are you having an answer? No, you can say it. They're Mariska and her husband are moving to Australia and they're going to build yes. a tiny house. And be net zero. So we're going to be totally off the grid. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited to, to follow along to that. So I've just brought a little bit of the stuff here. Um, and this is one of the things that I absolutely love. It's my leaf shave razor. Here in the UAE, like most men, like I don't ever shave my own face. I always go to a person to do it. And um, I wonder if there's anybody in Abu Dhabi that would use some kind of more sustainable gear. So can't you then just ask them to take your blade with you and then the next time you come, they just use the same blade because then that's your blade. I'm interested. So I don't even speak the same language as the guys that do it. So <laughs> maybe, maybe try and harder, figure out, and to, yeah, just because it's a very heavy duty type of thing. I mean, this thing is going to last me years. I might give this to my grandchildren one day. <laughs> I hope. And um, and then this is if we have a world still. Yeah, exactly. If if they're not suffocating because we don't have any oxygen. So this is my um, tooth powder. Oh, cool. So, so it's literally just like a powder. Oh wow! It's so like you would, smoked yeah. out. <laughs> so you would wet your toothbrush and just dab it in there, and then that's it. That's and how you use it. Your dentist says there's no problems. Yeah, well, they would probably want to sell me all the plastic wrap stuff. So sometimes you need to take. Don't that. trust dentists. Yeah, don't. But the travel bit. So. So this is important because my approach is pretty minimalist. I bring usually. A not even always a toothbrush. If I'm going to be at hotels that have single-use plastic toothbrush, I won't bring anything. Maybe deodorant. Wow. But I don't. I just use the hotels. Amenities. Amenities. The little small. Yeah. Mini. Okay. So for for the travel, um, there's a few key items that I always have. If you're especially you know going on a long journey and um, you know sometimes when you fly you get those blankets that's wrapped in the plastic um, so I try to avoid that and actually have like a pashmina so it looks nice so I can actually use it as a blanket okay. I can use it as a towel when you go to the beach <laughs> and I can use it when I'm cold as like a scarf or anything Smart. so it's like a three-in-one thing and that avoids you from opening the blanket that you get on the plane. I'm the kind of guy who if there's nobody sitting next to me, I'll open their blanket too and <laughs> use it as like a second pillow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Just use it with, with the plastic on because yeah. then at least they yeah. can they can use it again. This is actually just like a peanut butter jar um, that I use. Sometimes I would have a stainless steel cup as well. It's important to have them empty when you travel, obviously. And I use this jar to also put anything in. So if I have food that I want to quickly put in or anything, I do that. I sometimes have a lunch box with me as well. So normally before I get onto the flight, I would make sure to have my lunch box full. You... Depends because even like a coffee cup. So if you take a coffee cup, that's not really recyclable. Okay. Because you've got your paper and then it's got a, um, a very thin layer of plastic on the inside. Wow. So it can't really be recycled with paper. So you need to have a separate recycling this is um, like kind of process for it. It takes a lot of water to actually separate those layers. Oh and um, so it's just not worth it. Don't take the cup, like rather use your peanut butter jar or if you want a really nice cup, use it. Or your water bottle. I use one. So I've got my spork and I've been through um, 
the check-in and the security checks and they've been fine. So just like a sport in a little bag. So I don't use cutlery or okay. anything. And then the beeswax wraps. And I also have chopsticks if I you know, need to get something. I don't think you, you will see me with a plastic straw. Maybe a plastic straw in my nose when I ask them repeatedly not for a straw and I get a straw, then I would typically put it in the restaurant in my nose. <laughs> and my husband loves that <laughs> um but i feel it's also like a powerful message that you know they need to kind of see that you did kind of ask not for a straw and i'm not saying anything i just literally stick the straw so maybe you are a little bit militant well i think with things like that with the plastic straws because i hate them do you have a spork i mean no why would i have why we, I'm like, I'll give you this one. I don't, I haven't used this one yet. No, but I can, where do you get them? Like, I bought so many, like, I still have like 30 at home. So <laughs> there you go. Why, yeah. why do you have 30? Well, we used oh to God, sell, yeah. Home. Thank you so much for coming today and, uh, you know, destroying my perception of myself as a good person. And that's You are a good person. It's not that sustainable. <laughs> But no, thank you for all of the, the insights. Three learnings that I had. The first is all of the indirect waste that I produced, especially like in the lifestyle, like in the UAE, where there's somebody doing all my cleaning and all my shopping and uh, even like shaving my face and stuff. I don't think about the plastic that they're using mm -hmm. on behalf of me. The second thing that I would say, and you've always, taught me this but now today we kind of like made some clear steps is that really is a journey you know I think that's important you know like maybe every month or every once in a while just take a look at what is is wasteful I also think a way to do that is to look at the things that are important to me uh, that I use a lot of and find the most sustainable version of that so for example the tea also I didn't show you my candle closet and then the third thing that I learned is just how much plastic there is. That, I, for example, that paper cup has plastic in it. That's like kind of mind blowing. There's a long way to go, but I'm happy we did this today, and I'm happy that I've had you as a friend for the past couple of years to help me on this oh, journey. Oh, thank you, thank, thank you to you, and thanks for having me. And I mean, I've seen you personally making some some changes, and. You know, it's all about small steps and it's it's not, you know, if you want to be plastic free overnight, you know, good on you yeah. and good luck, um, you know, but take it as a journey and don't punish yourself. Don't feel like you have to kill yourself because you've used one item. Right. You know, think of all the good that you've done as well. Just take it one step at a time and identify the items that is number one easy for you to switch because you do not now want to start making your own body lotions no. and doing stuff whatever is easy go with that and just continue the journey one one step at a time thank you so much you're most welcome so i hope you guys like this video and that you enjoyed hearing from mariska you can follow her on instagram at designs by mariska yeah, i'll put some link uh, at the bottom as well. Um, you also have a YouTube channel where yes. she puts some podcasts. I was on her podcast about exactly a year ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like uh, it, comment down below. If there's, you have any questions, I'll make sure that Mariska sees them and then we'll get you some good answers. So thank you and I hope everybody will travel safe and sustainably. This looks beautiful. You Can you even be closer? Do you want to be closer? Still happy with your car? I think I'm getting a new one. But what car? I want to get a Maserati. What? Yeah. How come? I mean... Look at Saul. Because that's what you do in the UAE. You drive a Maserati.